This is Earl Amin with the 2020 Foresight Podcast, where CEOs of companies share their insights. It is six questions in nine minutes because top CEOs know how to listen and be concise. So let's get to it. Question number one, in just a few sentences, tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, my name is Vince Scott. I am uh, the founder and CEO of Defense Cybersecurity Group, a small company that is focused on uh, cybersecurity and cyber audits in support of the Department of Defense. Wow, that's, that's big stuff. Excellent. Question number two, what's the best thing about being the CEO? Uh, the independence to set the course. So, so over my years of experience, right, I've worked in a lot of different environments and, and always uh, had, to, had to follow the course of the strategy that uh, other people set. I really enjoy uh, being able to set the course for, for our organization uh, and, and, and blaze new trails where, where we want to go. Very good. Question number three. I hear from other CEOs that leading their team and being able to see the road ahead can be a challenge. What are your thoughts? Um, I think leading the team is always a challenge. So this every business is a people business. There's a people component. No matter how much we look at technology, this is really about the people. And I don't care what you do. Cybersecurity, a very technical field. No, really, it's about the people. As far as seeing the future, uh, no one has a crystal ball, right? Uh, what we have to be able to do is take the, the information that's available uh, and make the best decisions we can uh, with the information we have. And that information is going to be imperfect. And you have to be prepared to, to adjust your plan. So not become so wedded to your plan that, that you drive into the, uh, using my Navy terms, rocks and shoals, right? You have to be able to say, oh, wait a minute, there's something coming along that we didn't anticipate. How do we adjust in order to uh, avoid the rocks and shoals and maybe even take advantage of those new challenges that have come our way? So it, it's not about prediction because it'll never be accurate. It's about that ability to change the plan and adjust on the fly. Well said. Well, that leads us into question number four, which in part you've given some answer to. What piece of insight do you want to share with other CEOs? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that, that I would share with other C CEOs is that this is about the leadership journey. And, and what, you got, what got you to where you are today will not necessarily get to you to where you want to be tomorrow. You have to be constantly learning and adjusting. And particularly, I see it as you go from a, an entrepreneur who's got a new start company to having 10 employees, to having 50 employees, to having 200 employees, to having 1,000 employees, right? I don't know that anybody can really define where the cleft points are, but there are certainly cleft points. Your leadership and approach is different when you have 10 employees than when you have 50. It has to be. Your leadership and approach when you have 500 employees has to be different than when you have 50 employees. So, so you have to be able to grow your, the way you interact, the things that you do. Uh, you know, when you're a new start company and it's you and two people, man, you're doing all the work and your hands are dirty and you're interacting with every client and it's all you, man. When you're 50 people, uh, probably not so much. And you got to you gotta pull your hands out of that day-to-day -day stuff and actually um, allow your people to do their job. And, and your role as the CEO changes. I think it's one of the most amazing uh, stories for me is the Walmart story, right? You think about Sam Walton and, and he started with a five and dime and grew that to a company that has a, a gross, uh, annual gross more than most countries in the world, right? This huge behemoth. So his leadership had to be able to adjust from start, starting a store himself to having three stores, to having regional stores, to having global stores, to, you know, and, and that's a real struggle. That is really hard for, for so many people to, to change and adjust your style as you go along. And I think it's something that CEOs should be conscious of and be thinking about and say, how does my leadership approach for the next year or the next 12 months need to be different than it was for the last 12 months in order to maximize the
the capability for my organization to grow. Good. Question number five, what other successful CEOs like yourself would you like to acknowledge and should be on my podcast? <laughs> so, uh, so I'll mention two. One is uh, Chuck Cologne. He's the uh, chief executive officer of uh, STI Tech, which is a medium-sized defense contractor uh, that I work with quite a bit. Uh, Chuck is a great guy, and he has also been along that whole entrepreneurial journey, right? He, he started that company uh, with, with another gentleman uh, 15 years ago, and uh, they've just gone really great. And I'd also like to uh, recognize a guy by the name of Bill Brogan, a good friend of mine. We were uh, on active duty in the military together, and uh, he retired and started his own business and has now grown that uh, to about a 25-person defense uh, contracting company. Uh, And Bill is just a really great guy who really wants to take care of his people and doing great things, I think, with his company. Excellent. Now for the final question, question number six. How do you celebrate a win? Yeah, I think that uh, small things matter, right? So as a CEO, as a leader, acknowledging the contributions of the entire team. And that can be, that doesn't have to be, I took you to Bermuda for a week, right? That has to be, hey, publicly, everybody did a great job. We won this contract. Let's recognize the team. Let's recognize the person that did the smallest amount on that team, you know, the newest intern, right, who was just kind of along for the ride to the person who led the team and and make it a team win. Um, Certainly don't make it your win, all right? And I've seen leaders who want to do that, right? It, it, oh, well, this is about me, uh, my win. Uh, that's, That's not good ways to lead your people and it doesn't build strength into your team over a long term. So, awesome. and of course, uh, we want to celebrate our team over time as well. I kind of save those, those, you know, let's have a Christmas party. Let's, let's yeah. celebrate, uh, you know, various events mm-hmm. in the company's life, that kind of thing. Uh, right. Maybe monthly birthdays, et cetera. But for a win, I think uh, it's, it's the CEO's job to publicly acknowledge the team that found the right. that resulted in the win. Excellent. Vincent, how can people find you? Uh, I have a website, uh, www.cybersecgru.com, uh, and uh, my company is here to uh, help uh, a host of clients uh, with their cybersecurity needs. All right. This is Earl Amin with the 2024 Site Podcast. For more insights, go to LinkedIn and search for The Gray Owl Company. Vincent, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to be here.